Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to the Be Unbound podcast. This week, I'm joined once again by our CEO, Jonathan Brush, and by our Director of Courses and Content, Victoria Grant. Um, We're here today, and uh, if you read the title of this podcast, you know that the topic is something along the lines of of coaching yourself and coaching and helping to coach your friends to live an intentional life. And something that I think is really interesting about Ascend, and this is not just a pitch for Ascend, I promise there's going to be some good stuff in here, but something I think is really interesting is the team's model. And that's something that Victoria and Jonathan have been working on for a few years at this point um, through other programs with Unbound. And it's something that we're incorporating into the Ascend program. Um, and it's really built on this idea of peer-to-peer coaching and accountability to, uh, to help reach not just your academic Academic goals, but also to um, remain accountable for uh, different things that you're trying to accomplish in life and to have kind of a specific vision that you're trying to pursue. But I'm also approaching this podcast with some genuine curiosity because I don't fully understand this part of the program, which is why I'm excited to have Victoria, or, uh, yeah, Victoria and Jonathan here with us today. Um, so I think first question is pretty broad and I'd like to hear from both of y'all. In fact, uh, maybe we'll hear from Victoria first on this, but it's just what are Ascend Team and how do they work? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So what are the Ascend teams? Um, I'm going to actually back up just a little bit, uh, not too far because Jonathan will kind of cover some of this and the philosophy behind the teams later. Um, But if you look back through history, if you look at culture, if you look at society, um, anywhere where you find a very high performing individual, almost across the board, they have the support of a high performing team of some kind. So human experience, my personal experience, and I would argue probably for all of us, um, we see that people tend to rise to the level of those around them. So we see that in elite sports teams, we see that in the military and things like field teams, um, sometimes debatably, but you know, you can see that in places like Ivy League schools. So Ascend um, is designed to maximize individual flexibility, individual customization, Um, But we place that flexibility and that customization in the context of a high-performing community. So with that background, um, every student who enrolls in Ascend is placed in a team of four to nine other students um, at different places in their degree. So sometimes that might be freshmen and uh, seniors in the same team, depends on the year. Um, But they're led by a student leader who's already worked through a leadership training program with us. Um, And then those leaders will be working through a coaching and leadership intensive throughout the course of the year, um, then they take that expertise back to lead their teams throughout the year. So in short, the teams just provide a great place for peer coaching, for encouragement, for accountability, discussion, um, some seriously awesome friendships at the same time. Um, but that's kind of in a nutshell what the what the attend, Ascend teams are and what they're comprised of. Okay. That sounds really interesting. I think something I'd also just like to hear on maybe to add a shade to that as well uh, from you, Jonathan, is just that obviously you also have experience managing different types of coaches. And this is kind of a model that you've developed after working with uh, with different models. So I'm kind of curious to hear about sort of how you've, uh, how you've a- a- arrived, if that's a word, to this, um, to this model. Yeah, so I think I'm going to talk a little bit more as, as we get into this about some coaching philosophy. But um, the idea of coaching and the, and so the coaching discipline and the coaching mindset is really central to everything in Unbound and has been from the very beginning. And um, so one of the things is that we've experimented in the past with having almost full-time life coaches in the program. And that was hugely beneficial to our students, but it had some difficulties. And some of those were behind the scenes difficulties in terms of costs and uh, logistics and all that kind of stuff. Some of it was just being able to explain to people in the front end what that was. And so one thing that happens, we were looking at that and saying, okay, well, look, how does this work? There are definitely places in life where you need a full-on life coach. But life coaching is one of those things that you get the most out of it when you understand it and you seek it yourself, right? If somebody's like, here, take a life coach, uh, then you don't typically get the most out of that, right? If you're kind of like, I need a life coach, that's when you're sort of primed to do that. And most students come in like, what is a life coach? (laughs) So they don't have any idea. So that's when we started really working with the idea of group coaching. And the Ascend teams are based on that group coaching model, that group coaching philosophy. And the way I kind of think about it is, okay, let's take the coaching discipline. If we could extract like the 10 or 20% of that, that's the most valuable, the whole thing's valuable. So hundred percent is the best, right? But if we could extract 10 or 20% of that, and we could consistently apply that across the board, we would make a significant difference in the kind of quality of the experience we're living for people and the kind of teaching that we can do. And that's where group coaching came in. 
and we said, hey, what if we could take uh, a student and we could basically give them 10% or 20% of sort of the full on coaching and give them some of these elemental principles and let them sort of practice on that, then turn them loose on a group and the Ascend team let them li- and let them lead that team while at the same time teaching the team to do the same thing. Uh, then all of a sudden you have this dynamic inside the team that's very different and looks very different from most teams you've probably been a part of. Uh, there's a philosophy that kind of grounds everything and you're kind of extracting the best of the discipline and applying it in a way where somebody doesn't have to be fully bought into life coaching and really understand what it is to get a lot of the benefit from it. Um, and so that's the group coaching sort of hybrid model that I don't know, I'm making no claims that it's unique to Unbound, but it is certainly a, a blend or a synthesis or a hybridization of the things that we've learned about coaching in the last 10, 12 years has been doing some of this stuff um, and kind of trying to extract the best of that and apply it to what we're doing now. Awesome. Awesome. And so Victoria, how, how, with the way this program is built now with the Ascend program, how does, how do the teams fit into the rest of the program? Yeah, good question. So the teams are designed uh, in large part to help students engage with the program materials, to help them apply it personally. So in that sense, it's honestly deeply connected to almost every aspect of Ascend. So it provides the foundation, it provides the context uh, for the other parts of the program, like the events, like the projects. Um, So just to kind of break that down a little bit from an academic side, students obviously are taking their own classes, depending on the degree they've chosen, that's customizable. They may or may not be the exact same classes that their teammates are taking, um, but they stay accountable for progress to their teams. And then with our events, um, students will be attending live events with all their fellow students, um, not just their team, but they'll have some team break off time in there. And then um, of course, they'll have a debrief afterwards just with their team. So kind of, again, you have that context. Um, and then with projects, students will also be completing um, a personal project throughout the course of the uh, of the year. And they can complete those as individuals or as a group with whomever they want that can be inside their team or outside of it. Um, but they check in with their teams, they stay accountable for progress. So in, in that sense, the teams kind of have a have a foundation, provide a foundation or context for all of these other program elements. Um, and it is worth noting that students are by no means restricted to operating only within their teams. Um, in fact, a great percentage of their time is spent with all of their other fellow Ascend students with the broader Unbound community um, and not just their teams, but the teams do provide that context for debate, for discussion, for application. Um, and so in that sense, that's kind of how it's you know connected to the rest of the program. It's pretty holistic. Yeah, I think that's really interesting because even just thinking back on um, on my experience in Unbound uh, doing college, even just having like a small group of people where I could sort of compare notes on like how we're applying what we're learning, um, even extracurricularly and just kind of looking at like, mm-hmm. you know, how are we utilizing our education? That's something that you can get more broadly through the community, but you have to really go seek it out. So I think kind of making that in is uh, is really interesting. Um and so just like we talked about, or we mentioned that we would get there, I think now would be a good time to kind of talk about what the philosophy is behind them, the sort of that coaching philosophy. So Jonathan, um, take it away. Yeah. And this is an exciting question and one we really love to talk about. And uh, we'll first start with kind of a funny little definition. Um, first of all, uh, there are some colleges and universities out there that I think do higher education really, really well. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and so, you know, if, if you're looking for sort of a, the highest level academic type of education, there's a couple out there that we endorse and think are great and, and love to work with and stuff like that. But when I think of higher education in general, I think of really overpriced, kind of under-delivering low-quality education. And uh, we kind of refer to those as box schools. And so mm-hmm. when I use the term box school, I want to kind of provide some definition for what I mean by that. Um, and so here's what, you know, here's what we do in the MBA team. We start to think like, okay, look. You know, several centuries ago, uh, Christians primarily, and there's some other influences, kind of invented this whole concept of higher education. And uh, they invented it to meet some needs and to train specific people for the kind of culture that's being built. Um, so we look around today and say, look, the box school representation of that, it's not working so great. Uh, there's a lot of reasons we think it's not working. And so what would it look like to reinvent higher education? Um, and maybe I would even ask a slightly different question. What would it, like, what would it take to reinvent life training. Um, I'm not entirely sure that always includes uh, higher education. It's necessary for everybody, right? Um, it is for some people. I don't know if it's necessary for everybody. Okay, so that's all to sort of set the kind of foundation here for the philosophy of this team. So if you look at traditional box school education, right, 
it's very individualized. Uh, you're, it's, it's all about your individual grades and your individual participation in class and your individual track through the system. And not only that, but if you're at a box school, when you associate with groups, and certainly community is part of what happens at a, at a college university, right? It's groups you pick. It, it's clubs that you joined. It's, uh, it's the hall that you want to live on. It's all those kinds of things. So you're picking your social group, and then you're going through this kind of individualized sort of track, right? When we think about online education, it's even more extremely individualized, right? It's all about your personal interaction with the educational component and stuff like that. Um, okay, there's a lot of advantages to online education, but that's not very reflective of what we find in real life. So if we go to real life, well, what do we see? Well, yes, real life success and, and achievement depends on your individual ability and skills and whatever job you're doing, right? But it, it, there's almost no situation where you're doing that in a vacuum. You're always doing that with a team. You're rarely doing that with the team you choose, right? So, so basically, a box school education is putting you in a completely artificial environment and telling you, purporting to train you for the real life, and it has nothing to do with real life. It doesn't look even slightly like real life, right? Now, let's think about how we could redo that. Well, what if we use the online aspect of it for the efficiencies and the low cost and then the convenience and the flexibility to deliver that individual content that you need to learn, okay? There's certainly an individual learning component. But then what if we put you in a team of people? And better yet, what if we put you in a team that you don't get to choose, right? Because some of those people are going to be awesome and some of those people are going to make you scratch your head and some of those people are going to be like, I got to work to get along with that person, which is precisely what happens when you're in any kind of team environment anytime else in the rest of your life. Doesn't matter if that's church, your neighborhood, the people you live next door to, the work team that you're in, whatever, right? That you're always in a team environment uh, that you don't always completely get the opportunity to choose, right? And even if you're in a team that you choose, you have to interact with the rest of the world in ways with people you don't necessarily choose to interact with. Okay, now what if we put those two things and we tied them together? And we said, okay, go ahead and pursue your individual educational process and journey here, but do it in the context of having to work with a team where you're working together, you're experiencing some things together. And that's one of the things that's really interesting. You know, in an online environment, we have to really focus on the communication skills, right? Because that body language, that physical presence, that thing that everybody tells us is so much of communication, that's absent. So, you know, and the distance thing, when you start out in Ascend Teams, when you're communicating over Slack and webinars and stuff like that, communication has to be really precise and it has to be really good. Oh, that's a fantastic skill to learn, right? But then we're going to combine that with these intense live experiences where you're going to be interacting directly with somebody. And that's also essential, right? Uh, but you're going to be in those intense live interactions where you're doing some things and really being challenged after you've built this repertoire of skills of being really great at communication because of the limitations enforced on you probably the online thing. And all that has to happen in the context of dealing with other people, which is much, much, much more like what real life actually looks like. So that's the philosophy behind it. It's actually, it's a concerted, deliberate effort to have your educational process both reflect real life and really emphasize and, and, and use the tools that we have to kind of build particular skills in the areas we think are most critical, like communications, like being able to uh, deal with each other effectively, and then like being able to experience intense things together and successfully uh, deal with those challenges and problems. Yeah, that sounds... Really interesting. I think, I guess one thing that comes to mind as a follow-up question is just, so what, how do you equip the students in teams to kind of engage in that and to kind of help each other in that? In terms of how do, you know, what are the requirements for students, right? Yeah. Well, specifically for, for Ascend Teams. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Victoria might be able to maybe finish this as I started, but, you know, so if you're assigned to a team, that means that you're going to be dealing with other people there's going to be a communication requirement. There's going to be a requirement to attend meetings together. There's going to be a requirement to work together in certain challenges and certain things. And so what happens is that, you know, through initially online and then eventually live, uh, that team's going to have to sort of figure out what are its strengths, what are its weaknesses, how do we interact with each other, how do we maximize the relationships that we have, how do we kind of work together towards some of these goals, even as we're all working individually each other. Because as Victoria said, deliberately, not everybody's in the same position in terms of when we have a senior and a junior and a freshman all working together, uh, which is precisely what happens in the real world, right? In the real mm -hmm. world, you don't enter a business and everybody's at the same starting place and they all mature together for four years, right? In a business, you've got an expert and you've got a middle person and you've got somebody just started and a rookie over here and somebody specialized in this area, not another area. And so again, the Ascend teams reflect much more in real life. And so when they have to be in that environment where they're all together, but then they have to 
focus and work on together on some things or share some things together, that's when those things have to bump up against each other and you have to really work on that communication and that connection and those kinds of things. Victoria, you can take that and kind of add to it. Yeah, no, I think that that gives a really good broad picture. Um, I'll nuance it just a little bit um, and add that as our teams progress through the year, they're designed, um, it's designed to kind of be a progressive experience. And so as we start off, even in terms of communication, um, the leaders are are trained in this as they go. There's a lot of facilitation at the beginning. Everyone's kind of trying to figure this out. They don't really know what they're doing. Students are trying to figure out how does this work. Um, but as they progress throughout the year and as they become more familiar with each other and with the program and just with the life skills that they're learning, uh, and as they are, you know, in some ways encouraged, in some ways, um, you know, commanded to engage with the material and to apply it and to figure this out. Uh, they, the students learn to step up into leadership positions and to practice their communications in the team. So it starts out as more of a facilitated experience, if you will, at the beginning. And then as students work through the program, it becomes increasingly peer coaching, peer working back and forth um, to the point where the leader can kind of step back at the end of the year and take more of a, a guarding role or, you know, a watching role, observatory role, I guess would be a better way to say it. Um, and let the students be able to kind of handle that communication and that that uh, guideline. So it's designed to help the student grow to position of ownership with that communication and with that dynamic with the students. Interesting. And so, and how have you, um, have you seen this model help students in the past? Yeah, I can actually speak to that a little bit um, as a previous Unbound student myself, but I'm going to just come back to that idea. Um, we talked about earlier that across the board, people tend to rise or fall to the level of those around them. And as with anything, um, Jonathan kind of referenced this too, it's up to our students what they ultimately get out of Ascent, right? Like that's that's up to them. We're doing our very best to facilitate an environment where students can grow actively, where they can realize their potential. Um, and we've seen this team model accomplished just that very thing. So it provides an active growth environment where students are engaged and supported and challenged. Uh, they've built community, they've built friendships, um, sometimes lifelong friendships, uh, and they've been able to turn that knowledge that they're gaining into wisdom, ultimately. So Unbound community across the board is a place where students push each other to be better, where they're not afraid of the big questions and the big issues of life, and where they show up and they're there for each other. We want our new students to be able to enjoy those same benefits, and that's why we've tried to build this model where they do have the option to connect with those people and, uh, and to reach that same ultimate place as well. I'll just add to that in terms of success, uh, you can sort of step back a little bit and think about how this actually works, again, contrasted to real life, right? So if you come through a box school and you've been uh, used to only sort of operating in groups that you're comfortable with and to be in your own individual path and to be really searching for answers and to feel like the point is to have a bunch of knowledge that you then send back on tests and, and papers and things like that. And then you arrive at a workplace, right? And you're with people that you may or may not have chosen. Um, you're asked to do things. And it's likely that you're doing something that you didn't get specifically trained for. And yet you're supposed to have all the answers because you have a degree. So there's a hesitancy to sort of seek out that stuff. That's a tough curve, right? And that's the whole new job thing that everybody has so much problems with. Well, let's contrast that to a model that looks like this, right? Where you've spent a year or four in a team of people that you didn't choose, that you have to sort of adjust to and do all those kinds of things with a philosophy that's built on asking questions. That's the entire coaching philosophy we talked to earlier, right? At the heart of coaching, it's not about, you know, teaching is having an answer and giving it to you. Coaching is helping that person find the answer. So it's almost like that old parable about giving a fish and teaching somebody how to fish, right? And so asking questions is the heart of the whole educational model. And this the idea that you have to seek help from other people and things like that. Now, that person gets into a job situation. Well, they're with a team that's made up of different people. Great. They've been doing that for three years. And they have to do a challenge that they've never done before. Well, you know, in Ascend teams, we specialize in throwing challenges at the team that they've never seen before, right? And so they've got that kind of thing going already. And the way to do that is instead of being, you know, intimidated by asking questions because they think they didn't know the answers, they think the way to start is by asking questions. And so immediately they start asking questions and sort of pulling the knowledge of the rest of the team. Uh, that's not just a sort of philosophical, this is the model we think will happen. 
that's based on real life experience of us watching how, you know, we've used team coaching uh, in multiple situations before, especially in the last two years in pilot, pro pilot programs have run. We've watched how students in Unbound use this coaching model. And then we've watched what happens when they graduate and go into the real world. And it's a very different outcome, right? The, the students that have that kind of background approach first jobs and second, third jobs very differently than box school educated people. Um, and so that's, I think those are some of the big advantages. In other words, the educational experience much more accurately mirrors real life experience and consequently prepares people better for that transition. Or it's not even a transition, it prepares people for that reality, I should say. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so off the top of your head, are, is there like, um, are there two or three questions like, like just sort of like prototypical, like these are good questions to ask, let's say in a, in a new job, like an example of something that um, an Ascend student, they'll, they get their first job. What's like an example of the type of idea they would apply to a new situation? Well, let's, I'll start with the first one, then we'll let Victoria do the second one here. Um, here's one that I find. Okay, so I worked in traditional education, box school education, right? For 12 years before I came work with Unbound students. And I hired actually more people in that job than I've hired in this job. And when I would hire those folks, and I'd hire some of the best and brightest, but they'd often be college graduates, right? So people that just came out of college, and this is their first job. And um, I would say, okay, I need you to do this. And they would say, okay, what do I need to do? And I'd say, well, you need to do this. And they say, okay, what do I need to do first? Well, I got to do this. Okay, what do I do next? What do I do this? In other words, to be this like, oh, get, they, they, wanted a, they wanted a syllabus, they wanted a plan, they wanted a checklist, they wanted to do all mm -hmm. those kind of things. And, you know, at, at, there's a time when that wasn't bad, right? I, I teach in my system. Well, that time's long past, right? Because the change of pace in today's world, technology changes, means that frequently I'm hiring people to do stuff that I don't know how to do. And, and you know, 40 years ago, the boss was the person that knew how to do everything and they just passed that knowledge on. Now technology changes, you, you know, I mean, I need you to hire, I need to hire somebody to do Instagram marketing. Well, how do I do that? I have no idea. If I knew how to do that, I wouldn't be hiring you, right? I mean, like, like this, is, this is a place that I don't even have a beginning place to start with. And so you're going to, have to figure that out. So that model of sort of come, somebody come in and say, well, tell me what to do, tell me what to do, tell me what to do, tell me what to do. That makes sense because of their education, but it's extremely frustrating from a hiring standpoint, right? One of the things that was really, really shocking to me is when I started hiring unbound students was they would ask a totally different question. They'd say, what is it we're trying to accomplish? Where do we want to go? Mm -hmm. And I'd say, we want to do this. They'd say, okay, and they'd be gone. And I'd be like, oh, well, where'd they go? You know? And then they'd come back and they'd have this huge solution for me that was often 10 times better than I expected, over, you know, achieved what I was expecting. And they're like, okay, what's next? And I'm thinking, man, I didn't tell them anything in between. And so one of the things that it seems like almost instinctively under unbound graduates wind up asking is, what, what does success look like? They don't always ask it that specific way, but they're sort mm -hmm. of saying, what is the outcome supposed to look like? And then they're willing to jump in and figure out how to get there. Uh, box school educated folks almost always ask, what is it I'm supposed to do right now? And it almost is like it's disconnected from where they're going. They're just interested in like, what do I have to do between now and, and quitting time? Or what do I have to do now to sort of show that I'm successful? Um, where people trained in this other environment are typically like, okay, what's success look like? Now, how can I get to the fastest way possible? So, Absolutely. And Victoria? Yeah, no, I, I would echo what Jonathan just said. Um, I have seen that in fellow students, and that's also been very uh, true to my own career experience as well, um, both working with other people and attempting to do that myself. Um, maybe just to kind of bring it to, you know, some some practical questions here. Um, I know my experience and some of the, the experiences of Unbound students that I've observed and worked with, um, coming into a new job, there's often a lot of uncertainties. And figuring out right off the bat what resources you have access to, um, if there's something that's you know job specific, if there's something that specific employer has, um, figuring out what the people around you know and what you can kind of gain and glean from them. Those are fantastic questions to ask right off the bat. Figure that out, like what resources do I have, and then um, also figuring out what is it that I need to know. What are my gaps? Because there always or almost always will be gaps if you are getting a new job. And trying to grow, there will be gaps in what you're able to do and um, and the things that you want to learn to do but aren't quite there yet. So figuring out what those gaps are as quickly as possible and then figuring out, okay, great, here's where I'm at, here's where I want to be, and what's it going to take to get there? What resources do I need? And since you've already looked at the resources, you know what you have access to, what you don't. Um, leveraging um, networking connections as well, that has proven to be a huge mm -hmm. thing. So asking what connections do I have? What connections can this person connect me to? What connections do can my connections here connect me to. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of maybe thinking more strategically along those lines, um, 
being comfortable with exploring and gathering those resources and then being willing to step back and take ownership of that process. Um, like Jonathan was saying, instead of going and saying, okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step? You know, if you need to get clear on something, do it, but then be willing to take ownership of that process and go figure it out. Absolutely. And if I would be so bold as to contribute to this conversation, I think um, uh, one thing that comes to mind too, and this is just something from my own professional experience, where it's like one of the questions that I've learned to ask that I find really important and valuable is basically why, why is each different person here? Like what are their personal motives for being involved in the team? And usually when I find that out, I mean, it's not like you're, you're, you're trying to find out, like you're trying to dig up dirt on something or anything like that, or start the gossip mill, but it's more about, um, it's so much easier to work with people when you understand what they're trying to get out of, uh, being on the team. And cause I've been in meetings sometimes where I'm like, well, why is this, you know, like, why is this person not supporting this project or this idea? And then months later, I'll be like, oh, well, that's because they're, they want the job for this reason. And basically like this project or taking the business in this direction completely undermines their presence on the team in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so it's like sometimes understanding those things um, can completely change the way that you work with people and, and how you kind of operate with the strategic vision. So um, things like that. If students are learning things like that in college through the Ascend program, I know I learned some of those things uh, just on, you know, through the community, through the Unbound community, um, and working on student leadership teams um, is another huge part of kind of getting that experience. But that's phenomenal. Um, well, I appreciate both of your time today. This has been really interesting, and I hope that uh, those listening got a little bit something out of it, got a slightly deeper understanding of the Ascend program. And if you're kind of curious and interested in learning more about like what are the good types of questions to ask, even just for direction with um, with life decisions, then the new Navigate course that we're launching this month is a great place to start. So if you're listening to this podcast and it's before. September 17th, you still have time to sign up for the free course preview. And if you're listening to this podcast and it's before September 20th, then you still have time to enroll. So um, if that's not something interesting to you, you can go to beunbound.us slash navigate. It's an entire course that's dedicated to asking the right questions so that you can find um, a better direction for your life. So with that, I appreciate you guys listening and we will catch you next week.